Now we continue the theme of social cognition with an odd foray into uh, neuroanatomy once more. Uh, we've met mirror neurons before and they got an awful lot of attention in the popular press because they seem to feed into the imagination of neuroscientists and psychologists simultaneously. We're now going to look at a, another kind of neuron which has got far less press but I have a suspicion it's worthy of at least as much attention, but it's not quite clear what we should learn from this. I'm talking here about a kind of neuron called a spindle cell neuron. These were discovered in the late 19th, early 20th century sometime by a guy called von Economo. So they're sometimes called von Economo neurons. They occur in the cortex, which is the outer layer of the brain. Um, you can see them on the slide there. The spindle cell has a very different shape from the canonical neurons that you find there otherwise, the pyramidal cell neurons. The pyramidal cell neurons are well known, very well studied. They were some of the first kind of neurons to be imaged. We have a very good handle on what they look like. Um, and in among them, in specific areas of the brain, we sometimes find these spindle cell neurons and they look rather different. You can see there's a different shape. The cell body with the nucleus is further down. It's in the middle. You've got a thick process emerging from it with two ends. Cell morphologists do this. They recognize very different forms. The spindle cell is identifiable on the basis of form, not on the basis of function. I am not going to attribute a function to these. Now, these are interesting because they are um, pretty much the only cell type that you find in ape brains that you don't find in monkey brains. So I mentioned before that you shouldn't confuse apes with monkeys. Apes includes humans, gorillas, orangutans, chimpanzees, and bonobos. And all of these apes have spindle cell neurons to different degrees, and monkeys do not. They are found in the um, frontal cortex. Now, remember, humans have a very large frontal cortex. It's kind of what makes us humans. Um, and spindle cell neurons arise there above the eye in the frontal lobes. And they have different distributions in the five ape types there. You can see orangutans have very few of them. And orangutans don't have very rich social lives. They tend, the males at least, tend to go off wandering all on their own. Then you've got, you see, a slightly denser distribution in gorillas. Gorillas have a particular form of social organization, the big nuclear family with the alpha male in the middle. Um, chimpanzees and bonobos have more. They also have richer social lives. They live in large groups with very complex, dynamic social relations. And guess who has most of these of all? It's us, the humans. And in humans, you find them bursting out from the area above the eye socket into large regions of the frontal brain. One area they're found in is called the anterior cingulate cortex. Um, historically, very many people have tried to understand the anterior cing cingulate cortex as being important in our the web of social relations that we form. Nobody really knows. It's a bit of the dustbin of neuroscience. The whole of the frontal brain Front, frontal lobe of the brain is a bit of a mystery. We've got to be very careful in our attribution of function, but we do know that somehow the rich social complexity of human lives has to do with this large brain, forebrain, that's maturing as we become linguistic and uncultured individuals. And we have reason to believe that these von Economo neurons are occurring in the part of the brain that seems to be relevant to understanding the social makeup of our species. Now, that would be interesting in its own right, but the story gets takes a, a funny twist. And to do that, to understand why this is funny, we need to look at a something that has been found again and again, which is the idea of convergent evolution. Convergent evolution refers to the development of similar structures in species that are only very distantly related. Um, so, for example. Visual systems have evolved in several distinct pathways. There is no overlap between the development of the eye of the octopus and the eye of the human. The eye of the insect is a different 
form of development. They're all eyes, they all are slightly different, but they all evolved independently precisely because there's, if there is, it's a, it's a fact, if you live on the surface of planet Earth, there is potential information available in the distribution of light that could help you in getting food, mates, and avoiding being eaten. So convergent evolution tends to happen when we have similar environmental conditions or a similar challenge arises for the organism. Um, so here, for example, are four pretty much unrelated species of small animals found in deserts. The North American kangaroo rat, the Australian hopping mouse, the North African jerboa, and the Asian jerboa. They look like minor variations on a theme, but they, um, they all developed independently of each other. What they have in common is the environment in which they live. Their thin, rounded body shape, large hind legs, thin tails, <clears throat> their hop, their nocturnal habits their particular burrowing and seed eating behaviors, all of these speak of a specific fit between these animals and in this case, the desert environment in which they, they live in. They're sensible adaptations in a desert environment. Now we mentioned when we were discussing the environment of the human, that the most important element in the human's environment is other humans. And the most important element in any primate's environment is gonna be other conspecifics. That's why it was very interesting that spindle cells should be found in the brain of a humpback whale. And we didn't expect that. 2012, I think it was. We don't have as deep a knowledge of whale brains as we do of human brains. We don't know as much about whales as we do about humans or apes, indeed. Female humpbacks live very, very social lives. In fact, in the social organization of the humpback whales, the females uh, exhibit great solidarity. They collectively raise groups of calves and then the calves grow up and the males tend to go off and be loners while the females stick around and have these very rich social lives. So why are we finding an independent evolution of the same kind of neuron in the same part of the brain in whales and in apes? Remember, not found in monkeys, so this is not a the same evolutionary process, this is a process of convergent evolution. The story gets weirder still. They were then found in elephants. Now, elephants are of course intensely social animals. We understand them, we are cognitively, we resonate with elephants, we understand them. They show obvious emotion, they care for each other, they have almost uh, um, rituals in the way that they, they assemble the bones of their dead. Um, once more, I'm lacking words. And these insights challenge us profoundly to understand what we have in common with whales and with elephants that we don't have in common with monkeys. Evolution is not all about single lines of descent. And social organization is not as we saw before when we looked at chimpanzees and bonobos, is not simply a matter of your position in the evolutionary tree. So I want to avoid clearly attributing any specific function to these, but I do know that we are learning something very, very important about our commonalities with other animals uh, and about the role of the nervous system in sustaining specific forms of social organization. So that's a little interesting. <laughs>